Today I'm on site at our natural build and we're going to be discussing three materials that will reduce your carbon footprint. No polystyrene ICF, fly ash and straw bales. The product we're using on this project is made by Nexem, which I have been pronouncing Nexchem for years, so apologies for that, Nexem. Uh, it's made with a wood fiber and Portland cement bonded together, and then they have a mineral fiber insulation, which you can get at different thicknesses. You can get blocks that are different thicknesses. So depending on what you need for your project will vary the size of the block itself. Nexem states on their website that the global warming potential of a finished Nexem ICF at R28 would be 5.54 kilograms of CO2 per square foot of wall area. That is about 10 to 20% less than typical polystyrene ICF systems. The other benefit of using an ICF foundation is that you use less concrete. In a standard foundation, you would have eight inches in most residential applications, whereas in this case, we only have five and a half inches. As you can see behind me, it is concrete pour day for the foundation here. And in order to reduce the carbon footprint, we used a product called Fly Ash, which is a byproduct of burning coal, which creates, allows us to create a substance similar to Portland cement. The National Ready Mix Concrete Association claims a 13% reduction in carbon footprint with fly ash, slag cement, and silica fume. Carbon emissions are measured by kilogram per ton, and they estimate a regular mix has anywhere from 100 kilograms to 260 kilograms of carbon emissions, so that would be a reduction of 13 kilograms to 34 kilograms by substituting fly ash. Straw, which is a byproduct of harvesting wheat and put into bales, has two methods when being used in construction, the Nebraska method and the infill method. In the Nebraska method, the bales support the roof, and in the infill method, which are, we are using here, the wood framing supports the roof, and the bales are put in between the framing members. Straw will actually absorb CO2, and in this case, we're using a 14-inch straw bale, which gives us a total R value of 33. On this project, the homeowner, Ben, will be doing the work for the straw bale, and here he is to share some more information. So, as we're using straw bales as the insulation for the south-facing part of our house, we have to take into account some of the unique aspects of using a material that is not a conventional building material. One of it is, is that it's grown close, and that's a huge advantage. Uh, here in Lanark County, we have a number of farms that produce hay and straw, both for their animals and for building. Uh, and so we have been in touch with a few farmers within 30, 40 kilometers of radius that do and can produce tightly dense packed straw in bales that are manageable size that we can in turn stack and use as insulation inside of our stud framed walls. Now, you do have to plan ahead. It's not something where next week you need to fill insulation and so you go get some straw bales. The, the straw itself has to have a relatively low moisture content and can't be cut fresh off the fields. In fact, it's best to use straw that is seasoned over winter for one year. And as such, it being uh, late summer already, uh, and soon it will be harvest time for straw and straw bales. We will be purchasing straw bales and then protecting them over winter, either in our garage or in one of the farmer's barns. And then that way in the springtime, install them. Once they have sat, the moisture has decreased, the straw itself is no longer green, and then therefore um, it is a better insulated material and more easy to work with. There are other benefits to using straw bale as well. From an aesthetic standpoint, you have these stunning deep walls with gorgeous deep window seats. Um, you can literally carve them up with a, a, a chainsaw to uh, run conduit for wiring, but also to make gorgeous curved uh, window wells. And um, one of the unique aspects is that you actually, rather than uh, wrapping your house in plastic, you're actually plastering over it with a mud plaster um, on the exterior, You'll add some lime to that for weather protection. Um, and it creates this um, moisture permeable, 
uh, breathable, but not air permeable, uh, really comfortable home to live in. Um, you can tint your plasters, you can, um, you, can, you can carve them, you can build all sorts of uh, architectural detail with plaster. Uh, it creates a really personalized uh, and comfortable home. These three materials are helping Ben achieve zero carbon certification. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to live consciously.